day. Good day, Mustangs fans. Josh Herman here, voice of the Peoria Mustangs for this new edition of Around the Stable. And you can see joining me today is the man, Jean Guy Trudel, or I should say SPHL President's Cup champion, Jean Guy Trudel. Guy, we haven't had an opportunity to chat a whole lot since the big championship. Get things going here just a little bit. Obviously, you won that President's Cup trophy in the SPHL with the Riverman. How did that feel? Well, it was a great feeling, especially it's been a while. We've been chasing that <laughs> that trophy for a long time there at the Riverman, and it uh, finally all came together. I, uh, You know, we were talking. It was our fourth final in five years, and unfortunately, uh, and when you get to the finals, it's two good teams, and we had a few bad bounces along the way, and it, it seemed like when you're destined to win it, with like we were last year, it all comes together and things just kind of go or We had to change a few things from the PK during the playoffs, but it seems like when, I don't know, sometimes you just feel like you're destined. You feel like it's it's your year and everything, you know, just came together. We scored the big goals at the right time. Uh, we got momentum at the right time and we still played some very good hockey teams, but came up on top and it's a great feeling. And you know, as a coach, you're extremely happy for, it seems like you're never happy for yourself, but I was really happy for the city of Peoria, for my players, for the organization. They've been waiting for a long time. So it's been 22 years, I think, for the city of Peoria. So it was nice to bring it home. So there's many levels of significance here. And the one we're going to talk about is Alec Hageman, Mitch McPherson, and Austin Wisely. Knowing them guys, and them coming through this Mustangs organization, that had to be something special to share with them three guys. Granted, it's special to share with that whole team, but something special with that Mustang connection with those three guys. Yeah, I, I think, you know, you're talking about uh, myself and them. We I, I feel like I'm a Peoria guy now also. I've been living here for 25 years now so I feel like this is my hometown and we had these three players that played for the Mustangs organization uh you know was brought up to Peoria youth hockey played for the Mustang organization went to play d3 hockey and came back and I, I think we had a little bit more pride you know when you have those type of players I think they showed a way to other players on the team to uh you know I, I always say you know with it's always gone a little bit that loyalty kind of thing for, you know, for your hockey team, but those guys really brought it back this year. And I think it showed they're just their effort and their want to bring it to the Peoria people, the Peoria, you know, city of Peoria was kind of nice. And, and for, for me, those are my boys, you know, I, I had a chance to coach uh, Austin. I had a chance to coach Mitch. I never had a chance to coach uh, Alec um, for the Mustangs. But, uh, you know, we've been working out in the summers for years together. So I know Alec really well. So I was just really happy for the three guys and, you know, their 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 legacy. They left their legacy here in Peoria by, you know, not only doing really well for the Peoria Mustangs at the junior level, but also bringing a championship home at the pro level. And speaking of the Mustangs, granted, you're unable to make it to a majority of our games because you've got other things going on. But when you're there, you have your hands kind of in the pot. And with training camp and your hockey schools, how does that feel seeing these guys come in and advance up to that NCAA Division Three level or a guy like Dylan Bentley getting that opportunity to play NCAA Division One at UMass Lowell? It's it's rewarding uh, for, for a coach. I mean, you that's why you do it. You do it for the guys to get the best hockey experience ever. And it, and it starts with the Mustangs and they all came through the, the system. And we feel like we do a good job of teaching young men how to not only become really good hockey player, really structured hockey players, but also to become real good people. And, you know, that's why we have to sign on the Riverman door. Good people make great Riverman. I feel the same way for the Peoria Mustangs. Uh, we want those kids to succeed not only in hockey, but in life. And, you know, you're, you're, you're building your, you're, you're building your foundation right here in Peoria. You're, you know, you come in as a 17, 18, 19 year old kid and you're building that foundation of not only hockey, but also life in general. So for me, you know, you feel like a proud dad every single time, like Dylan, I've been working with Dylan for three years now at true hockey with the Mustangs. I train him in the summers. Uh, so for me, you know, like, you're like a dad, you, you want those kids to succeed. And when they, you know, they, they, they just get those great offers playing, you know, NCAA hockey is just, it's just a lot of fun. And for us, we are trying now, I got involved a lot in Peoria youth hockey. I'm the hockey director and, 
And for me, I want to build that foundation of kids that know that when you play in Peoria, you have a chance to play NCAA hockey. And I say, I think for a while it wasn't that way, but we're trying to build it. You know, for all those kids, they can dream. I always say you need to dream to be able to make it happen. And I want those kids to dream of playing NCAA hockey and following the footsteps of the Alec Hageman, Mitch, and Dylan Bentley and the Wiseleys that, you know, all came through and then have a chance to play pro hockey after. And one thing I remember my first year I was interning with the Riverman, we were down in your office talking, and you you said one of the greatest statements I think I've ever heard come from a coach's mouth, and this has kind of stuck with me. You said, I'm not a coach, I'm a teacher. I yeah, and develop. yeah I, I believe in that. So even at the pro level, which we're in the business of winning hockey games, our fans want us to win a hockey game. I still believe that my relationship with my players later on in life is more important than that. So I want to teach them the right things, not only in hockey, but how to, you know, how to represent our city well, our team well, our logo well. And, and for me, it's an everyday thing, you know, for my, like you said, my true hockey camps I have all summer. Uh, that's what I do all summer. I try to be the best teacher possible. And is it perfect? Absolutely not. But I believe if you give those kids a great foundation, even if I, you know, they, I call them kids, but even my 23, 24, 25 years old, guys like Alec Agamon that came to me at 24, I still felt like I could still build that foundation for him to become a better husband, a better, you know, I mean, a better father now that he has two kids and, and things like that. And I, I've had my experience, my good and bad, and you try to, you know, take the best out of it and, you know, make everybody better around you. And I think that's what leadership is at the end of the day, you are trying to put power and, you know, in other people's hands. And for me, I'm lucky enough to be a coach but I, and you're right, I see myself more as a teacher than a coach. And that's, I feel like that's my responsibility when people trust in me and signing with my pro team, or if parents allow me to, you know, to teach their young hockey players at a junior level or the youth hockey level, I believe that they put that confidence in me. So I have to give it back. You know, I mean, I have to make sure that I do a, a good job of, you know, teaching the kids a proper way, not only on the ice, but off the ice also. And you talk about your true hockey academy. We see the posts and stuff. Kind of give us a walk through a day of the True Hockey Academy in Peoria there. Well, I'm lucky. First of all, I, I think I have the best staff in hockey. I have uh, myself, uh, Blake Ortman, the co-coach of the Peoria Mustangs, Alec Agamon, my captain, and then uh, Dylan Bentley before. Uh, this year, since he's a, he's a freshman, he had to go a little early to school to make sure he, they get the workouts in. But every summer, he usually stays with me the whole summer. So we have a great coaching staff of four, and we start early. Our workouts are at 8.30 in the morning. We have different groups. Uh, you know, we have our older groups, our younger groups, and we have usually a little break in the afternoon. Then we come back at four, another workout. And then after that, I'm on the ice. Uh, usually four four nights a week, we're on the ice until 9, 15 at night. So uh, it's, it's, it's hectic, but it's a lot of fun. And summers are great because you're teaching more, I think, skill and game situation skill instead of, you know, more structure like you do in the season, especially with my pro team. So for me, uh, it's always really re rewarding. And we get 21 sessions in my elite camp and just to see the progress of these young hockey players, it's absolutely fantastic. And that's why we do it. You know what I mean, and you get, I always say you get a few thank yous, you know, from parents and that's, ma that makes your day and that makes your summer. And that's why we do it. It's, it's, it's rewarding. And I'm lucky to have the, the most loyal coaching staff there is. They, they help me out. You know, they know I'm, I have a big family. I miss a workout here or there. You know, those guys are always there to make sure they continue to progress with those kids. So it's a lot of fun. So being behind the bench and, the COVID season, you were behind the Mustangs bench. What are the adjustments like from the professional level to the junior level to even the younger guys with training and motivation and working with them, getting to be getting them to be the absolute best hockey player they can be? Well, there's a few things you take into account as a coach, and every level is different. So when you get to the the Mustangs, the junior level, I, I think spirit is one of your, your big things. I think what happens is, uh, you know, you talk about the body, the brain and the spirit. And I, I think we do a pretty good job of always 
um, training those kids so they're strong, they're fast, they're in shape, they're ready to go. I think you train their brain when it comes to structure or game details and things like that. I think a lot of times what happens at this level is the spirit. Sometimes the spirit goes down. And then when the spirit goes down, you don't have the energy to be the best you can be. So for us, it's always about keeping that spirit up, making sure they're excited every single day to come to the ring because they know they're going to learn. They know they're going to get better. And that's the toughest thing in coaching. I think a lot of coaches um, forget about, you know, they, they want to train so hard that they forget that the brain is still, is still the most important thing in hockey. And if, if a guy does not want to be there or is not excited to come to the rink to get better every single day as a team, you're not going to have success. So, you know, keeping that, that spirit up, keeping guys wanting to come to the rink and get better because we do demand a lot from players. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, they know they're going to get better if they bring the right energy and the right mindset at the rink. Now, training camp for the Mustangs coming up here in a couple of weeks. What's something you look for? Some of these young men coming in, you might have seen them play. You might have seen tape on them. I know you're a huge guy on watching video and stuff like that. But when you see them actually play, see them in motion, and you're making adjustments in their game, what exactly are you looking for? Um, well, your first thing that you always look for, I think compete is a big one. Uh, you want to make sure you find kids that want to compete. Uh, and I, I like to just roam around, talk to parents and talk to those players also, because for me, uh, your mindset, your attitude is really big in hockey. Because like I said, we want to good, bring good people that want to get better, that not just say it. But it's pretty easy to read that. You know, I mean, that age level of kids, you can read them and see what they're all about. And after that, I'm big on body language. Um, in games, uh, how they react on the bench, how they react when they do a good play, how they react when they do a bad play, all those things coming together. But first and foremost, in training camp, you're looking for compete. You want players that want to get better because that's, you know, I always say culture is built in practices. So if a player does not want to compete in a game, in a, a trial environment where, you know, it's, it's do or die. You're trying to make a team. If he can't compete there, the chances that you can train him to compete in practice every single day where you want to build your culture is going to be very difficult. So for me and foremost, I think it's that compete level. You want to see that kid wanting to do whatever it takes to be a pure Mustangs. And speaking of compete level, is it harder to get a, 19 20 year old young man to a level of compete and that desire and that hunger to compete yeah it's it's uh it's not harder uh, you just need a little bit more patience because a lot of times what happens is they um um they came from you know youth hockey and now we're asking them for the daily grind because we don't have a lot of days off uh it's an everyday thing uh so it, it is you need a little bit more patience and I, I i think now hockey is a lot more about building relationships and we talked about the spirit keeping the spirit up the spirit comes from a lot of time from your one-on-one -on -one meetings with them so you need a lot more patience it's just not like in the old days where you can just coach 20 guys and say, let's go. And they all added in them and they would just go. Now you really need those conversations, those relationships, understanding what kind of person you have, introvert, extrovert, what you have to do to put them on the right track to make sure they do find that compete level. But it is really hard to be honest with you. That is a lot of kids that we get, you see initially really fast if they have it or if they not, and they, they don't, um, hopefully they find it but it's a lot more difficult usually it's somewhere in them and you can see it early and then you just build from there but if if they really don't that's a tough one how difficult is it getting these young men to come in and play within the structure and the system that you guys play in there in peoria um uh I believe a little bit more in details and habits than I do in systems and structure. So what happens at the end of the year, we're going to see what kind of team we are, which I think we're going to be really good this year. And I believe in development at the junior level, at the pro level also. I think that's why players like to come to Peoria because I really believe in teaching and in developing. Even if you're 24 years old, I still believe if you stop developing, you're done in hockey. So for us, we believe a lot more in, in habits and details every single day. So if I give you an example of my big A to four check, you, you know, on their four check, 
if your F1 doesn't do the job, you can't, you know, execute a good forecheck. So for that, you need to teach exactly the techniques of how to forecheck, what to do when you're F1, all those type of things. And that's way more important than just sending five guys on the ice and saying, okay, we're establishing this system and you do it. No, that's not the way it works. You have to really get into the details of that structure to make sure the players are good. So that's what we try to teach because no matter what, every single coach you're gonna see in your lifetime are gonna have different systems, different you know structures. So for us is to train them that they're so good that they can fit in any system. And for that, you need the details, you need the habits every single day. So whatever they decide to do in their forecheck on other teams, if you're a great F1 and you do the job all the time with a great stick, a great angle, you know, you finish the right way inside his hip, you get the puck back every single time, no matter what structure you'll play in, you'll become a good hockey player. And that's what we try to teach here in Peoria. And speaking of that, the details, all of the intermission interviews I do throughout the season, that is one of these things that these young men always comment on is details and sticking with the details and you'll be fine doing what they do out there on the ice there at the Owen center. So looking at training camp coming up, it is in a couple weeks. I don't, I think it's the 12th, 13th and 14th. Correct. I'm sure we'll see you tooling around the Owen center there. I'll be there helping out doing, doing whatever it is that I need to help out doing. So Mustangs fans, just remember that training camp coming up schedules released. That information's on our website. Keep an eye on all of our social media platforms for any news, coming out here before the start of the NA3HL season coming up here. Guy, thank you for taking a little bit of time and joining us here. I greatly appreciate it. Hey, Josh, thanks for everything you do for us, buddy. We love you over here and uh, keep doing a great job for us. We appreciate it. Can't wait to see you to 12. And to all our fans, uh, tryouts are open for public. So if you want to come and watch your, you know, your next, uh, your next hockey team, your 2023 hockey team, just come on down to the Owen Center, 12, 13, 14 of August. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I always say that's kind of when hockey starts in Peoria, the Mustang tryouts and then PYHA falls and then the ribbon follows. So that's kind of the start of hockey. So come on down, say hi. I love to chat hockey with anybody that wants to come down here. Our, uh, you know, Mustang fans or Riverman fan or PYHA fan. Let's just have fun that weekend and build the best hockey team possible. Thank you for your time, Guy. I appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it, Josh.